Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I play through Luddite. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Luddite. Luddite is designed by Madeline Adams and Joseph Adams. And it is a roll and write campaign game attached to a graphic novel. And it's coming to Kickstarter in a few days on July 11th. As a disclaimer, I've been provided with a print and play version of a partial bit of the campaign. I will be showing you the first level of the campaign. I will not show you any unlocks or the story. I don't want to spoil any of that for you, but I just want to get you an idea of how the game plays, how to play it, and see if you like the gameplay. And so in this game, you're going to go through the story and then it's going to tell you to play out one of the maps here. This is a hacking module. You're trying to hack and work your way through the NED. You'll have an actual token. I just have uh, a little wooden disc here that I had in my collection to use as the needle that works its way through the NED. You'll get some dice here that I look a lot better than my white and black dice here. And so the way the game goes is you're gonna be rolling dice and you're gonna be doing actions. So let's say this is my roll here. Let me explain how the actions work. So one of the things that you have to consider is you're on a timer here. You see at the clock here, the clock is gonna count down over time and you're gonna have to manage your time and try and get as much done as possible. In this particular scenario, you're trying to work your needle from here, the entrance, down to here, the exit, before the clock runs out. And I'll explain all the movements on the NED towards the end of the, the rules here, but the main mechanism is dice drafting and using those dice to do a variety of things on this board. And so the first thing, like I said, you would choose to do, well, you don't have to do it as the first thing, but one of the dice has to be the clock. And so you're gonna pick one of the dice. Let's say I picked the one and use that as the clock. Then what I would do is cross off that many boxes here, starting left to right and top to bottom. So I would start here. Now, if you cross off a box and that's, and it has a symbol on it, and that's the last box you cross off, then you'll gain that resource. So if I use the one here, I'd cross that off and I would gain an energy. I'll go over what the resource is doing a little bit. But if I had instead chosen the, the four die, I would mark off four boxes I would not get that energy even though I crossed it off. It has to be the last box you cross off. Now, if you use higher dice, four, five, or six, you'll be able to add a little tally mark here when you use that. So like in this case here, I used a four and I can mark off this one here. What this counts towards is the damage you've done during the hack and you wanna do a lot of damage. They're worth points at the end. So in this case here, using that die achieved me four victory points. And we'll tally the damage at the end down here, but that's one big way of using it. So while the bigger dice will move the time along more quickly, giving you less time to complete your goals, they still give you damage, which is going to help you towards your goals in the end. And so the other thing you can do is you can do the hack here. The hack is this little diagram here, and you have different rows and columns as you're trying to complete these for various bonuses. Now what they offer is different ways to earn uh, damage and or make damage and earn victory points and sometimes resources. There's a resource here. But the way it works is you spend one of those dice to cross off one of those boxes. So in this case here, I could cross off a four and cross off that box there. Once you have completed a whole uh, row or column of that action, you'll gain whatever it is that's attached to it. So in this case here, if I completed this row here or this column, then I will gain this right here. And this symbol is gonna correspond to something on the NED, which I'll show you in a little bit. There's other ones here, like this row here gives you eight damage. And this row here also gives you eight damage. And this one here, just as these two for this column, will give you one credit. The, the, another module that you can use is the roll bonuses here. And they're pretty straightforward. If you just use one of your dice, let's say I use the five, I can use the five right here to gain two multi-tools. I can use the five down here to do two damage, but uh, the other ones don't have a five spot on it, so you can't use it. I could use the one here to gain one credit, 
or here to gain two energy or to do two damage. So you have different options for that to gain different resources and tools that you're going to use. And then uh, the other module is this one here, the switches. And you can use one of your dice and match up the number to flip a switch on or off depending on where you're at. They all start in the off position. So when you use the die here, it's going to add it to the on position. So if I use the four here, it would switch it to the on position. And so then let's go ahead and talk about the Ned. See, the goal here of the game is to move from here, the entrance, to the exit and complete a certain amount of damage. And in this case here, I'm going to choose the normal victory, which will be 60 damage or better. Easy is 50 and hard is 70. But you got to move this along the way. And there's different things that you have to do in order to be able to move it. So first of all, you have to unlock the various nodes. The ones with the dice symbol in each of these. You have to use a dice of that number to unlock that node. So if... I have this five here, I can unlock this one here. Now I can pass through this, except I also must have the switches in the right position. It tells you in the top right corner of each of these sections, this one says to have the five in the off position. Well, the five starts off in the off position. So I now have access to this node. If I later then put the five in the on position, I will no longer have access to this one. Now, if this were the case here, let's say I had completed these over here and I had unlocked this node with this five die and decided to use this four die for movement. What you can do is you can move the needle as many pips as the die you're using for it and you're gonna go orthogonally adjacent. So in this case here, I might move it down here because this is completely unlocked. The switch is in the right position and I have unlocked the node here. But then I can move over here. See the one needs to be in the off position and it currently is. So I can move over here. When you enter one of the red spaces, if you have it unlocked over here, on the hack, you can go ahead and cross that off. And at the end of the game, you're going to get the end game damage that is shown here. All the same goes for the green symbols here. If you enter into one of those green symbols, then you'll all automatically gain that resource. So if I had the two and the three, so it requires two and three in the on position. So if they were like this and I had moved into there, then I would cross off this box and gain that resource. Once you gain a resource or do the damage here, you can't do it again later. You can still enter into those spaces, but you won't be able to cross off that box for those bonuses. So there are some other switches that you need to be aware of. Some of them require or, so two or three to be on. And so you have to have that uh, set up for you. But then let's go ahead and talk about the resources because you got a lot of resources at your disposal. You have credits. Credits are going to allow you to buy dice. And so one credit will let you duplicate one of your dice that you've rolled. And then two credits will let you make a die of any value. This will be an imaginary die, but you use it like normal. And then a multi-tool will let you adjust a die plus or minus one. And a multi-tool will also let you flip a switch. So you're allowed to do that. And then an energy will let you move the needle up to three spaces. It doesn't have to be in a row. It can, you know, it can go like this, assuming you have everything unlocked. And then an energy can also cross off one of these squares on the hack without a problem. You'll see the hack symbol here. It matches up here, so for easy reference. And then the last one is uh, two energy will let you move the needle one space regardless of whether uh, something's unlocked. So if I didn't have this one unlocked here, I could just move straight in. It doesn't have to be, the switch doesn't have to be in the right position or anything, but then I could gain that bonus if I had that, that symbol already unlocked on the hack. There's a few other things to take note of. If you do enough of the switches here at the end, you'll gain two victory points for any of these crossed off on the far right. If you are crossing off stuff on the clock and you get towards the end, let's say we had crossed off all the way to this point here, and I decided to spend the five die for the last two spaces, you do not get the bonus damage. It's only when you cross off that many spaces. So it's not necessarily using the die, but you have to cross off that many spaces. 
once you cross off that last base at the end of that turn, that's going to be the end of the game. And you'll calculate your total in the bottom right hand corner here. All right, and so we're ready to go right now. One thing I want to also make note of is you start with one multi-tool and one energy, so keep that in mind. So all we're going to do here is we're going to roll the dice. We have a six, a two, and a four. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I would have liked to have that energy. Now, if I use the six here, I can get that multi-tool. That is really tempting, isn't it? I, I could... You know, actually, I'm not going to do that because I want to use the six and the four on the hack. So we're going to cross that off there. One and two. That'll be the clock. So we use the two die. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the six and the four right here and start this hack because I want to try to get this one symbol there. And then we roll again. That's a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use one for the clock. So that's done. I'm going to use the five over here to unlock this node. And then let's see, I have the two left here. I'm thinking I should use it for resources so I can gain two energy here. So we'll cross off the two and we'll add two more energy. Anytime you use a resource, you're just going to exit out as you go. And then the next turn. Oh, wow. Six, six, and five. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good at all. Well, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is use the five die right here. I think that's the best option. I don't want to advance the clock too much. I do want to look at unlocking some more nodes. So we're going to unlock this six right here. You can unlock nodes that aren't in line with anything. Uh, just keep that in mind. So if I wanted to, I could, you know, use the, the five all the way down here in this spot here. It's good for planning ahead. And so I have one six left and let's see, maybe I should go ahead and use it for the roll bonuses here. And that'll give me a couple of multi-tools. Next turn here, much better roll. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the two for the clock because that's going to get me an energy. See, one, two. So the last square I crossed off has an energy symbol. So I'll gain an energy. And then I'm going to use the three to go ahead and cross off this one here. And then what do I want to use the one for? Maybe I should go ahead and use it for this one down here going and unlocking that ahead of time. And then the next turn here. Oh man, big rolls again. Well, I think we're going to have to use the multi-tool a little bit here because I can't afford these big rolls. And now if you look here, if I use a four here, I'll get a credit. And I think that's worth it. Credits are quite powerful. So I'm gonna use a multi-tool to adjust this five to a four. And then I'll use that four on the clock to go ahead and gain that credit. But I did four, so I gained four here. I forgot earlier, I did a five. So I did do damage there. So that's, that's going to be extra damage for me. But I go ahead and gain a credit. And now I can use a credit to duplicate dice if I want. I don't think I need to do that yet. But I am going to use another multi-tool to bring this down to a four again. And the reason for that is I want to cross off this box right here. And now I've completed this symbol here, which means if I go to this box, I will be able to unlock it or use it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and actually work towards this symbol down here using that last six for that spot there. And we'll go ahead and roll for the next turn. Oh, look at that. It's six, six, and one. Well, I definitely want to use the one for the clock, I think. I think that's best. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so for one of my sixes, I'm going to go right here, getting ready for this symbol too, because I'd like to complete that one. And then maybe the other six, I'll put it right here. So maybe I can get that credit. Next roll. That's interesting. Two, five, and six. Well, if I use the two here, then I will get an energy symbol. So that's helpful. I definitely need to think about start using my energy. And actually, I'm tempted on that. I could use it right now. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use three of these right now to cross off these three boxes here on the hack and then gain this symbol. And then what I think I'm going to do is use one of these to move. I think I'll go ahead and use the five to move. But before I move, I'm going to use a multi-tool. And I'm going to go ahead and flip the one. Oh, no, never mind. I can't flip the one switch yet. I have to move first. So let's go ahead and use the five to move. 
we're going to go 1 here. See, the, the 5 is in the off position. Everything's in the off position right now. So 1 here, 2, and we'll cross off this box here because we have that symbol. Then 3 and 4, and we'll cross off this one because we have that symbol too. So just in that movement, I've earned 24 damage. That's pretty good. Now I have one extra movement, but I don't have a place to move and I don't want to risk it at the moment. But I'm going to go ahead and use the six right here. Maybe I can get this symbol too. So maybe I can get this symbol and this symbol and make it to the exit. We're going to try that. All right, next turn here. Wow, what a roll. <laughs> that's, that's definitely interesting. Okay, so let's see how we're going to play this. So we got to use one for the clock for sure. Interesting. I, I'm just half tempted to just go ahead and use the other two right here. I think that's best. I could duplicate it as well. Do I want to duplicate it? No, I'm going to save my credits. Next turn. Two, two, and four. Well, if I use the four, I will gain a multi-tool, but that's just going to rush the end. But it'll still give me some damage, so maybe that's good. We'll just go ahead and do that. I'll gain the multi-tool here, mark off one more tally mark. The other four here will help me with this symbol. Now I've unlocked this one. And the two here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use for multi-tools. And that'll gain me two. All right, next turn. Three, five, and five. That's not good for me right now because I'm worried about the, the clock running out. But we'll go ahead and mark the three here because that's the lowest one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my multi-tools to adjust this die, making it a four, so I can mark off this box here. And then I need to start flipping some switches here. So I need the one on, the five on, and the four on to get through here, but leave the three off. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and use this five to flip this switch here to the on position. And then I'll use two multi-tools to make the four on, and the one on. And so now these spots are available. I can move through them and this one as well. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and use one energy. As shown here, I can use one energy to move three spaces. So I'm gonna go one, two, and three. And then I will be able to mark this one off here because I completed that symbol. And that one earns me an extra 20 damage, wow. And the next turn here, we have a one, three, and five. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the three for the clock. And that's gonna gain us a multi-tool. Then I'm gonna use the one here for energy. And so I'll gain two energy. And so what if I risk it right now and I use all three energy to go ahead and mark off this here, one, two, and three. And then I go ahead and I use my two multi-tools to flip on the switches in two and six. I need three to be in the off position when I reach the exit. But then I can go ahead and use this die to move five spaces. So let's see what we can do with that. So we can go one, two, and gain uh, two more multi-tools. And then we'll go three, because we have the two and the six in the on position. Gain this here, because I have that symbol. I finished that one off and then four and five. <laughs> I've made it to the end. Now the game doesn't end right now. I still have a chance to do some more damage. So we're gonna try and do a little bit more damage before the game ends. All right, a six, six and four. Well, <laughs> that's not very good. But what we can do here is we can use the four. Well, we'll use the four on the clock in a second. Let's go ahead and use the six. We'll use a six down here to gain two damage. When we'll use a six up here to gain a credit. And then we'll use the four as the clock. And we'll do one, two, three, four, adding another tally mark and ending the game. And so now we have to see if we've earned enough uh, damage to win this scenario. And so it tells you all the symbols here on the far right. And the first symbol is the Ned. And so we count the points that we've done here. So I got 9, 24, 44, 61. Wow, 61 points. Well, I definitely got enough points, I guess. 
And now we see if we had any bonus points on the hack. I didn't earn any of those rows of bonus points, so we got nothing there. And then we have bonus points on switches, but I didn't max out any switches, so nothing there. And then points on the clock, so I have four per tally mark here, so that's 12 plus five, and that's 17. And then... I get one point for each unused multi-tool or energy and two points for each unused credit. Well, that's two, four, and five, and six, actually. So six points here. And so it looks like that's going to give me a total of 84 points, and I have won the game. And so there you have it. That was the tutorial and solo playthrough of the first scenario in Luddite. It's going to be a multi-scenario campaign roll and write game with a graphic novel. Sounds fantastic, looks fantastic, and it's coming to Kickstarter in just a few days on July 11th. You'll have to check out the link in my description if you want to follow the campaign. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. I'll also point out any rules errors I, I might have made. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And thank you everyone who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.